Blizzard has always been sure to make their character models fit the playstyle of the game and character. For example, in StarCraft II, every unit has a very easily identifiable silhouette. If you were to squint so that you can no longer see any details in a character model, simply seeing the blurry outline of a unit would be enough to discern a baneling from a roach, or any other unit from any other unit. This may seem very basic, but it's endlessly helpful to higher level players, who will be able to assess a situation within a second of seeing it because everything is so well defined. In addition to the silhouette, details within a character model, such as color or texture, can make a character even more easily identifiable. And the same philosophy can be taken toward character abilities. It's easy to identify which ability a character has used by the animations and effects that surround it. Once you've learned what a character and its move set looks like, this information becomes incredibly easy to assess, which can be invaluable during a fast-paced teamfight. Even beyond gameplay mechanics, Silhouette can give a strong sense of personality. For example, looking at Garrosh Hell Screams or Diablo's Silhouette would give you a good idea of what kind of person or non-person they are. But this also allows Blizzard to subvert your expectations. From simply looking at Thrall's tough build and orc face, you could be forgiven for expecting him to be a brutish and somewhat hard-headed character. But Blizzard subverts your expectations by making him fairly level-headed and relatively sensitive. In Heroes of the Storm, Blizzard is allowed to take this subversion of expectation to an extreme. Because they don't have to take this game as seriously as their other franchises, they're allowed to play around with the character's personality more so than they've been able to before. For example, they can make gross bugs look lovable and adorable. Also, the variation between characters and the different skins available for them gives the game a good sense of diversity which keeps the heroes visually engaging. Now before going into the environments, I just want to talk about the game's camera angle for a second. In Heroes of the Storm, you generally play on a right to left field, as opposed to say Dota or League of Legends, where you might be playing more diagonally. Because you're playing right to left, you're going to be seeing your character's face a lot more often, which gives you a more intimate connection with them. I know this is a very small thing, but I do like that Blizzard changed this up from the normal MOBA mechanic of moving your characters across a diagonal plane. The environments do a good job of reducing or eliminating unnecessary visual noise while still remaining aesthetically engaging and colorful. This is again something that Blizzard has been very good at. If you were to look at the multiplayer maps of StarCraft II without any units on them, the environments would look very plain, however very colorful. That's because StarCraft relies on the dynamic movement of units to make the environments look engaging and dynamic. Heroes of the Storm doesn't have the luxury of relying on a mass number of units to make the environments look interesting, and therefore the maps are full of flora and fauna and smoke and critters to make the environments interesting without distracting from the important aspects of the gameplay. The environments of Heroes of the Storm have a somewhat odd scale, like they do in most MOBA games. However, the odd scaling is much more cohesive with the humorous and cartoony nature of Heroes of the Storm, as opposed to the more serious lore and atmosphere of games such as Diablo or Warcraft. The characters are as tall as trees and the heroes could barely fit into a fortress, which only enhances the cartoon-esque nature of the game. However, some map features such as small critters still serve to give the player a proper sense of scale. One interesting aspect of Heroes of the Storm's art style is that it manages to be surprisingly harmonious between games. If someone were to play Heroes of the Storm without ever having played Diablo or Warcraft or any other Blizzard game, I would be surprised if they knew that these characters came from separate games. They managed to remodel and retexture all of the characters in such a way that they all look cohesive within the game and they all manage to blend in with each other. Heroes uses warm, vibrant colors and rounded contours in both the character models and the environments. They do this in order to make the game look somewhat cartoony, which is a much more accessible and casual, friendly art style than, say, that of Diablo 2. It also has the side effect of reducing the stress level of the player by having a very tension and stress-heavy game take place in a somewhat inviting and harmonious world. I also found it interesting that several different maps have very different lighting mechanics. The color and intensity of the light varies from level to level, but what's more interesting is the day-night cycle in the Garden of Terror. 
Different lighting brings out different values for each individual color, giving the environment and heroes a bit more of a lifelike feel. And it gives the characters and models a bit more of a dynamic feel than a static lighting effect would have. This diversity in the lighting, for me at least, makes the game look a bit more visually interesting on this specific map. Also, differentiation, which I'm not sure is actually a word, creates tension and unease in maps like Garden of Terror, and I hope Blizzard plays around with their lighting more often. It's also especially interesting to see the dissonance between the fanciful and humorous Garden Terror map mechanic and the darker setting in which it takes place. Character design is a bit more difficult to talk about because it varies so much from hero to hero. And although I could spend all day telling you about each individual character, instead I'll just talk about some overarching design observations. Logical weight and practical proportions simply isn't a huge factor in Blizzard's character designs, because Blizzard's characters seem to be so out of whack that it's almost comical. And I think that's the way they're meant to be, because they have a very cartoonish art style. Therefore, they have quite a bit of room to arbitrarily assign weight and proportions to convey relevant information about both the personality and gameplay of each individual hero. They do this by creating an art style that's consistent with itself, which in turn conveys reliable information to the player through art and aesthetic. For example, characters who can take a lot of damage, melee and generally tankier characters, have prominent chests, stomachs, or, obviously, wear heavy armor. Their character selection pose or in-game model will also generally be made to highlight their more tanky features. Notice how their shields or their stomachs or their armor will be the primary focus of their pose in the character selection screen. Assassin characters will usually be made to highlight their weapons or their arms, and generally they won't look as strong with smaller chests or smaller stomachs and lack of armor, making it clear that this character can output but not receive a ton of damage. Specialists look unique and unidentifiable in order to convey the idea that they have special abilities that don't fit into the normal tank, DPS, or healer specializations, usually making the player question what the playstyle of this character is because it isn't immediately identifiable. Even the movement speed of a character is often reflected in their character design. Even though some characters seem larger, Chen or Diablo for example, they have relatively smaller feet that convey the fact that they are still as agile as anyone else. In fact, the lower body of a character is usually used to convey quite a few things. Larger feet convey a more stable balance and are usually used for tankier characters, and small feet are used to convey instability or agility, usually used for damaging or healing characters. A hero with a large upper body can still be seen as agile if they have smaller feet, making their body look kind of like an exclamation point without the point. A smaller character can still seen as sturdy and tanky if they have larger feet, like Felstead or Amumu from League of Legends. A small character with small feet will usually be seen as vulnerable and squishy, like Lily. Heroes of the Storm takes colors from both the warm, pink, red, orange, yellow, and cold, green, teal, blue, purple, spectrum to give each map a unique aesthetic that is meant to draw on different emotions and moods. This way, each map is uniquely identifiable from its color palette and it keeps the game visually engaging through variation. The colors used, regardless of the warmth or coolness of them, are always vibrant, which I assume is meant to make the game look even more cartoony and accessible. It's difficult to find any hard edges in heroes. The shapes are all rounded to further convey the non-visceral and fun feeling to the player. Take the Lord of the Rings movies, for example. The Shire is rounded and green and vibrant, and all the hobbits have curled hair and round faces, whereas Sauron and Mordor are enveloped in hard edges and sharp corners in order to extract a different kind of emotion. Heroes is rounded and vibrant in order to convey a universally positive emotion. I'm sure there's plenty which I didn't talk about during this video, or forgot to include, but that's all I've got for now. Also, my voice is almost dead. Thank you for watching this unnecessarily long video, and goodbye.